Hey guys, welcome back to Zero News here with another article for you guys today. It's coming from newsjunkiepost.com, July 30, 2014. When the Ukrainian situation was going on, either it was a coup by the United States or it was an overthrow of the government by the people, uh, it all depends what side of the story you're, you're reading on that. The, there was a conspiracy going on in, back in 2014 or 15 where the gold mysteriously disappeared from Ukraine in the middle of the night. It was loaded up to plane in planes and taken out. And that was the last I heard about that story. I did a little bit of digging and I found this article and it kind of explains what actually happened to that gold. So let's go ahead and get started with the article. Uh, the article is titled Ukraine and Crimea's Vanishing Gold. Since the United States sponsored coup d'etat removed Ukraine's legitimately elected government and installed an ultra right wing regime with Arsny Yatsenyuk as the prime minister. Ukraine has been brought to its knees by a needless civil war and faith in the myth that ownership of dollars will make it a rich Western country. Mr. Yatsenyuk and his entire cabinet resigned on July 24, 2014, because ostensibly they could not push for harsher austerity measures against civilians. Who are already suffering. Ukraine has become another Greece while Yatsenyuk waits on the sideline for the U Ukrainian parliament to collapse. Both the US and Ukraine economies are fueled by dollar mythology and are on the brink of financial collapse. While Russia and several other countries have been increasing their gold reserves in preparation for a worldwide economic crash, the US has been digging itself deeper into dollar debt. For the time being, faith in the myth that those with dollars or rich keeps the dollar afloat. Most trade in the world is still done in dollars, and since many other countries are also up to their necks in dollar debt, if the dollar fails, so will they. Now, the U.S., of course, knows this. This is why it promised Ukraine loans of $17 billion in paper money through the International Monetary Fund, or IMF. IMF Managing Director Christina Lagarde described the loan as being risky, but the IMF does not take risks any more than any other lender. Financial loan companies are obliged to know what collateral will guarantee a loan. Gold is a collateral that Janssen Yek had to offer from a country that was tearing apart at the, at the seams. Gold is what all countries fall back on as a reserve to support the confetti in your wallet. In economic terms, gold is worth much more than paper money. Because there is a finite, finite um, quantity of gold and you cannot print more of it at whim, as collateral, gold does, however, pose a problem in unstable economies and war-torn zones. Other groups might take power, for example, as happened to former Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych. How can the IMF be sure it will be repaid with interest? if the gold collateral to back up the loan remains in Ukraine. One way around this dilemma would be for the U.S. to look after Ukraine's gold reserve. This is what probably happened. On March 7, 2014, about two weeks after the removal, uh, removal of Yanukovych, a small newspaper called Iskra, formerly based in Sapporo in East Ukraine and now apparently shut down, published an article that was picked up by many online sites concerned with general news and the, the metals market. The Iskra story alleged that a reliable source from Ukraine's former Ministry of Finance said that Arsny Yatsenyuk had ordered 40 boxes of gold to be loaded onto an unmarked plane at Boryspol Airport in Kiev. Witnesses who reported seeing the heavy sealed boxes being loaded at 2 a.m. by 15 men in black combat gear and masks some with machine guns and a mysterious man or men entering the plane were told by airport supervisors not to meddle in other people's affairs. Since Ukraine's gold reserves amount to about 36 tons, each box would have contained about one ton of gold. One day before the mysterious flight, the U.S. Congress had approved President Barack Obama's request for a one billion loan to Ukraine. Considering how finance works in a corrupt global corporate world, it is unlikely that these two events would be unrelated, though it might be argued that the U.S. is merely holding the gold on Ukraine's behalf. It is a fact that what was once Ukraine's gold is now with the country that funded regime change in Ukraine. Germany, which had kept its gold reserves in the U.S., 
to pre prevent them from falling into Russian hands, failed in a recent campaign to get its 3,386 ton gold reserve repatriated and a face-saving statement reported that it now believes that the U.S. Federal Reserve is an honest broker. Another tale of gold involving Ukraine relates to Scythian gold artifacts that were on loan from four museums in Crimea and on display in Amsterdam until August 2014. During an unprecedented European tour of these treasures, a March 30, 2014 Wall Street Journal article questioned whether these gold artifacts still belong to Crimea, since it had been part of Ukraine when the treasures were loaned out. Clearly, the mainstream mouthpiece of U.S. financial markets was prompting its readership to speculate that the Scythian gold belonged to Ukraine rather than Crimea. This suggests that the U.S., having already got the bulk of Ukraine's gold, is encouraging Kiev to steal gold that belongs to Crimean museums and is more valuable for its antiquity than, it, than its weight. So that's the end of the article. Ukraine gave its gold and it probably will never be able to pay back that $1 billion loan that the U.S. lent, lent to it. So uh, you can call that gold lost to the U.S. So I uh, hope you like the article. And if you like the stuff that we're putting out, don't, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next episode.